Okay, we're going to create a simple circuit in Tinkercad that's going to help us explore um, the Arduino and the uh, particularly programming aspects of the Arduino. So to get started, just uh, click on Create a New Circuit. And what we're going to do is, first of all, dr drop an Arduino onto the canvas here. So right here we have Arduino Uno R3. We're going to drop that on to the canvas here and we're also going to take this small breadboard and put it here. I like to lay it out this way. It makes things a lot cleaner um, when you lay the breadboard to the right side of the Arduino um, sitting this way. So the next thing we we'll want to do is just put a LED on the uh, on the canvas here. And so we're going to take this, uh, this LED and the first thing we're going to do is rotate it. Remember um, for LEDs, the anode is the lead that's got the little kink in it, and the cathode is the straight side. Okay, what we're going to do is rotate that LED. Um, I like to put LEDs on the board so that the anode's facing upward and the cathode's facing down, and we just put it over here, and we draw a couple of lines from the LED to the board. And we can change the colors of those to gray so it kind of matches the um, lead color for the LEDs. And what's nice about a layout like this with the LEDs is that it gives you a nice compact layout for multiple LEDs when we get into doing multiple LEDs later. And, and it also takes up a lot less space on the breadboard and it requires a lot fewer collect connections because we're just going straight to ground on one of those leads. So that so that's one less wire we have to put in the drawing. And you might think, well, you know, big deal, we're saving a wire. But when you have lots of LEDs, it gets to be a problem. You're, and you're, not only do you use a lot more wires, but your drawing looks a lot more complicated. The next thing we're going to do is take a resistor and drop it onto the breadboard here. We're going to change the value of that resistor to 220 ohm. So 220. And... What we need to do next is to hook the LED to the Arduino. We're going to use pin 13. So we're going to bring a wire up here and to get multiple bins on the wire, you can just hold the mouse, take, let go of the mouse button, go in another, push it back down, go into another direction. You can keep doing that until you get to where you want to go. So, and I like to put a couple of uh, <clears throat> connection points in there. So we got, got some flexibility later. So here we are, I'm going to go down to pin 13. And keep in mind that um, the board, the Arduino, has an LED hooked to pin 13 already. And it's, the, it's a tiny LED marked L on the Arduino. And it's right here. Okay, I'm going to change the wire. I don't like green uh, for routing signals. I'd rather use a, a, a color um, other than red and black. And so I'm just going to make this uh, yellow. Okay, so now we got to hook up the ground to the Arduino. So we're going to take this line down here um, and just take this and take it over to ground on the Arduino. And we're going to take this and make it black since it's a ground. If I were hooking up the 5 volts from the Arduino, up, I would hook it up up here. Uh, up near the top in the positive line, that positive horizontal line, but we're not going to need that for what we're doing right now. All right, when you're doing this, uh, the best way to get started as far as getting code put into the, uh, the code box here, um, by the way, here's the code box up here. Um, by default, it goes to blocks, which we don't want to use. So we're actually going to change this to a code. To do that, we got to go here and pick text. So if we do that, we actually have um, text that goes in. And right now, the since one of the first programs you run with the Arduino is usually Blink, <clears throat> this is already set up. 
and this is what the code looks like and I'll, I'll go through the code and explain what it does and explain some of the features of C and in C is initially it seems a little intimidating to people but C is really one of the most powerful and um, as far as I'm concerned an easy language to understand once you understand the way it's set up um, and C was created back in the 60s to create the programming um, the uh, operating system Unix uh, and it's been one of the most uh, useful and most powerful programming languages for many many years several decades um, and it was actually used to not only create Unix but it was used to create like Microsoft Word, Microsoft um, Windows it, it, very very powerful language and um, it's a uh, so useful and so elegant that it's still in use today and uh, in fact the Mars rover has several million lines of code in it of C code <clears throat> okay so let's go back to uh, the, uh, the layout here this program is already loaded by default when you use an Arduino the code is already set up for uh, what we call blink pin mode tells us that uh, pin 13 is going to be an output we're going to be uh, turning that output on and off so it's, it's an output we can take any in, any pin at least an input output pin and we can set it for either an input or an output setting it up for an input would mean we could use a push button to take data from a push button to make something happen um, remember these are digital inputs although we do have analog inputs that we'll look at with the Arduino later an analog input is an input that can take a varying voltage and convert that into a number so right now we're just going to use pin 13 and as I mentioned there's already a LED on the board that shows you what pin 13 is doing but we really want kind of an external hookup like we've got now mainly because we're going to add some more LEDs later to do some more interesting things if we take and close the code box right now we can run this simulation and what we should see is the LED turning on and off like like it is right now and remember you can change the color of the LED in Tinkercad if you want to also so right now we got a red LED that's blinking I found that uh, I use 220 ohm resistors simply because the LEDs aren't really bright if you use a 470 ohm resistor and Tinkercad doesn't seem to have a problem with using a resistor that low I think you can actually go as low as 100 ohms and not have a problem let's see what happens if we do that so if I were to go to 100, it should even be brighter. And Tinkercad doesn't seem to have a problem with that. But 220 is safe, so I would just stick with 220. Because later when we use more LEDs, um, we could ultimately draw too much current from the Arduino. And that could be a problem. All right, so we got this... Uh, LED blinking, that's what this does. We're going to stop the simulation. We're going to go back to code. And we're going to take a look at the code here. Our code contains two primary functions. And uh, I've circled those two functions so you can see what they are. Those functions are setup and loop. I'll explain later what void means. Void really just means that the function does not return anything. And that doesn't make any sense right now except... Uh, until we talk about it later when we talk about returning a value but right now since loop and setup are just containers for other functions and other operators and things like that um, they're not returning anything they're just basically being used as containers so the first thing we have um, is setup and every Arduino program needs to have a setup and a loop function in it and all your code goes either into setup or it goes into loop. Um, you have to have code. You don't have to have code in setup, for instance, but you have to have those two functions set up in loop. And all the code is contained in one or the other or both. And so the first thing we're doing in setup, setup is for things that happen only one time in your program, that only have to happen one time. So all we really need to tell the, um, the IDE, the the programming language is look we want to make pin 13 an output so we have a function called pin mode 
the two inputs for pin mode are the pin itself, which is pin 13, and what you want that output or what you want that pin to be, and you want it to be an output. And going back to the Arduino itself, if you look at the Arduino board, we have these um, numbers from 1 to 13 at the top of the board, and we also have at the bottom left of the board, or the bottom right of the board, we have A0 through A5, which are analog inputs. But they can also be outputs, and we'll talk about that later too. Okay, so we only need one pin, and we're make, we need that pin to be an output so we can drive an LED. So that setup is just telling us, let's do that. Let's tell the board that that's what we want. And that stays put once you run your program. You're just telling the board, look, I want pin 13 to be an output, period. The next function, loop, contains several other functions that are making our LED turn on and off. So if you look at the first function in loop, it's digital write. So digital write allows you to make a pin, a digital pin, either high or low. And so what we're doing there is we need to know, for digital write, we need to know what the pin number is, and we also need to know what we want to do with that pin, and we want to make it high. So digital write 13 comma high just means make pin 13 high. That means you put 5 volts on the pin when you make it high. Ordinarily the pin has 0 volts on it. The next function is delay, and the delay function kind of pauses the program for a specific amount of time. And so we have the delay set right now for 1,000 milliseconds, which is one second. So now the LED's on. We're waiting one second. And then the next command, the next function, digital write 13 low, is turning that LED off. So after um, we waited a second after turning the LED on, we turn it back off again. We make the out, it's the output of pin 13 low. And then we go into another delay. And that delay is another one second delay. And that second delay there is, is really necessary because if we want the LED to turn on for one second and off for one second, we have to have a second delay there. If we didn't have that second delay there, what would happen is the LED would go high. It would, a second later, it would go low. And then there would be no period of time passing before it turned it high again. So it would look like the LED was always high because we didn't have that second delay there. So we'll get more into functions and operators and other um, structures in C later on, but I wanted to just go over this right now. We're going to use this setup, this uh, resistor and this LED, in a lot of uh, programs we're going to write. And even later, we'll add more LEDs and do some more, some more interesting things. But this is what I want for right now. I want this uh, setup. I want you to have an uh, Arduino setup um, like this, a Arduino, the wiring going to the board like we have right now. And remember, next time you do another uh, lab based on this particular connection, um, duplicate it, give it another name, and then you'll be good. And by the way, one thing I didn't do yet was to go over here and rename this. So we could just call this Arduino Hookup 1. And so once we've done that, um, then we can, when the next lab you do, you'll just call that Arduino Hookup 2. Um, or you could call it Arduino Hookup Blink. Whatever you want to call it, but just be consistent in what you do in your, your um, naming of these different, or, um, different, in these different Tinkercad hookups. To close the code box, we just click on the code button again, and we're back to where we were before. So this is what I want you to do in the first lab. And what we'll do is we'll take this same setup and use it several different times to do more and more interesting things. And each time we do these other uh, code modifications, they're going to teach you another part of C, another possibility in C. And so you're going to learn C basically by using this hookup initially. 
until we move into something a little bit more complex.